I gotta think of like twisted. Twisted is a word. It just means cool, you know? Twisted, gnarly, tubular, all the good stuff. You know what else is tubular? Me counting down. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the BNR stream today on this fine. 3rd of July, 2023. I hope you have had a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my week has been pretty good, pretty smooth actually. It's been very nice and chill. Uh, it's still cold in, in, the, uh, in the, the Sydney land of uh, the land down under, but it's getting better. It's getting better. We've had some sunny days and uh, it's starting to warm up a bit, so that's all good. And uh, it's the end of the financial year, which means uh, here in Australia we're going to do taxes real darn soon. So uh, if you're an Australian, um, prep a bit. Hold on, I'm moving the mic. Prep a bit because the, you know, the tax comes upon us all. Uh, maybe you all owe stuff, maybe you don't owe stuff, but I know I owe stuff. Maybe. Who knows? So, I always owe stuff. I don't know how this keeps happening. So, uh, anyway, let's, uh, try and do the jump. I think I did it. Cool. Yeah. Sick. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, I'm playing Pokemon. It's the same game as the last... We're on week nine. We're getting pretty far. Um... We're sort of in the home stretch. I don't expect to beat this game today, but I think we're going to get very close. Very close. Very, very close. Um, in the last stream, uh, pretty much uh, I fought the last gym where, you know, we've got no more gyms left. The only thing left to do in the game is to just head out east, go into here, and witness how low level I am. But there's a couple of extra things that I wanted to get done this stream. Um, not too many extra things, really. Gosh, my mic seems to just get further and further away from me. I don't know how this keeps happening. Who keeps doing this? Who keeps moving my mic away? Um, so, yeah, so, uh, there's two more Reggies that I'll still need to, to discover. So I'm gonna trek over to Morville City here, where we shall find the next one. And I'm probably gonna want to buy some, uh, more Ultra Balls, because apparently the amount I bought is just... It's gonna be really cutting it. I mean, I only use like six, I think. I can't buy them here. Well, we're gonna hope for the best then. At least on this guy, I can I can do a bit better on the next one. Um, but yeah, oh boy, that Reggie took a handful of captures. So, um, yeah. But no, t um, it's uh, it's gonna be a, a nice fun time. Also, uh, happy. 4th of July, Happy America Day, if you are American and it's that day, and if it's not that day, or you're not American, stop celebrating it. I tell you, you, you don't get to celebrate it when it's not the day. Nah, it's fine. Celebrate whatever you want. Um, <laughs> but, like, do people, like, um, legit, if you don't celebrate, hey, you know, it's a day to celebrate. It's gonna be a lot of people who are refighting me, and, uh, I've got something in mind, don't worry. So, in the desert place, uh, one of- oh. Central. Why am I going Oh, <laughs> riffraff. Oh yeah, he's like, nearly about to evolve. Why don't I break his bricks? Like, he's about to evolve, I don't- I- I was so, like, caught up at the end of the last stream, I was like, oh, Red Ice is taking so long, I don't wanna- I don't wanna handle it. This is what I really don't want to handle. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the, the biggest thing, I guess, um. I'll jump right into a, a mild bit of news or a few things, um, to, to mention. But, uh, first of all, I talked about the RTX 4060 last week. Every one of my predictions. I don't, I don't know. Well, was it a prediction? It was. Mostly based on leaks and other things like that. Anyway, first of all, Riffraff, he's evolving. Well, right there, with one Sancher away. Finally, the very last evolution of the team in Stream 9. Here he goes. The big, the bad. I now don't have to figure out how, whether it's Anorith or Anorith, because it's just... Armaldo. Or is it Almodo? We'll never know. But like, oh, look at his stats, and he's so cool, he stands up. Look at his attack, it's 123! <laughs> like, even Swampert, who is, like, you know, a real gnarly, like, 
physical attacker, it doesn't compare. It doesn't get close. His defense also, geez. Like, yeah, I mean, Swampert's got speed, he's got special attack. Armado is definitely slower. I think he, does he have health as well? Uh, yeah, he's got health, so. But like, yeah, the amount of like attack is so good. And the gist that I'm gonna have is that we're gonna have Ninjask pull a baton pass and give him all the swords dance and the speed buffs. And then we just see what happens. This is the most amazing thing, I tell ya. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's get rid of that, uh, that experience share. Let's give it to, um... I'm amazed Nonogram is actually, like, not benefiting as much. But we'll give it to, um, to Cast Form. Because it gets a bit less love than maybe you should. Uh, I need a Pokémon with Strength. I need a Pokemon with strength, but I didn't come with one with strength. Yeah, I don't know why I walked all the way without, uh, without Zigzagoon. Whoops. My bad, my bad. We'll get there, we'll get there. It's a bit of forward prediction, but yeah, the, the, the puzzle in this, uh, in this next Reggie place, it requires that you have a Pokemon that knows strength. None of these are actually, like, as, um, as bad as, uh, you know, they used to be. Oh gosh, who would actually be against? I think I'd be set, like Swampert and... I got a few, I feel like it's gonna be Rock-type, it's probably gonna not be the best for Ninjask. Plus also I'm catching him, so it doesn't really, you know, it's no love for the experience. Thank you, Yiga clan. Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, no. So that, that 4060, it came out. I, the reviews were, like, in general saying it's not good, but it's at least not as bad as the 4060 Ti was to the 3060 Ti. Here's the puzzle. Um, what does this say? It says, right, right. You can see that the top two words are the same. Uh, the next two words are the same. Down, down. And then... Uh, then use strength. So right, right, down, down, then go into your party and use strength. Magically, the door opens. And there he is, the next Reggie. We're gonna save, because it saves me the six minutes of walking around. 2006, what a great year. What is exactly my plan against the Reggie? I'm not 100% sure. Riff Raff is, like, mostly set. Actually, he is entirely set. He's got Brick Break. We'll see what happens. Grr. So we got another Reggie. Uh, this is Reggie Rock. I guess the nice thing... I got the little eyes thing. That's kind of a hint to their braille. Uh, Reggie Rock is, uh, just Rock type. It's not Ground Rock. He's got Super Power, uh, which is definitely not a fun attack, but I'm also Armaldo, so that's fine. That reduces his attack and defense. Uh, Brick Break, it should do a crazy butt ton of damage, but it is Regirock, and he should be able to, you know, tank fair, a fair bit. Um, Regirock also knows Curse, which is going to do the increased attack and defense, which justifies the use of, uh, superpower. Lowers his speed, but it doesn't, well, it doesn't matter in this case, he is slower than me. And, uh, let's see if we can hit him with a return. Should be a low amount of damage when it's not super effective. Yeah, that should be good. Uh, he also knows Rock Throw, which is going to be super effective against me. And uh, last move he knows is Ancient Power. Um, so I think they all, all three of them know Ancient Power. Yeah. Uh, so we've got 36 Ultra Balls. Let's give it a crack. Um, again, catch rate of three. We're going to be here a while or not long at all. Depends how the game feels. But for now, it's going to be mostly just waiting and tanking attacks. I could probably use... Um, Return one more time after it's used. Yeah, after it's used, like, a defense up again. Hopefully, won't kill it. Hopefully. This is a crit. <laughs> Every time. Every time. Every time. Because, um, yeah, you want to, like, write it as close as possible. So if you can, like, somehow scrape it to, like, one pixel, you're doing good. You're doing good stuff. But, okay. No. Take two, take two. It's all good. Um, yeah, that 4060, it's... 
not great. But it is, I mean, in my eyes, I think on an absolute level, it's a card that sort of works. I'm still a little, I don't know if I clarified this or made it very clear last, um, last week, but yeah, I, I feel like how good the 2060 is, give it, compared to the 1060, it was a price increase and the starting price for all these newer 60 cards has gone down um, gradually. So I think the second one was the 3060 was only $330. This is only 300 US dollars. Um, doesn't really mean much in Australia though. The 2060 was cheap at some point and then the 3060 never was as cheap and the so it doesn't matter that the retail price was lower. It never was as cheap. You know, that's a big problem. Um, this isn't gonna be super effective, but maybe it'll do a bit of damage. Okay, that's good, that's good. Oh, only problem is gonna, um, maybe get flame bodied. So yeah, uh, Reggie Rock, uh, for reference, his stats are, he's got, uh, 80 HP, 100 attack, 200 defense, which is why, um, it didn't look like, uh, Omaldo was doing that much damage. It's because he's got 200 defense. Uh, 50 special attack, 100 special defense, and 50 speed. So not very fast. Um, the special attack sucks, so don't worry about that. Um, if you've got a Pokemon that, uh, well, otherwise it, it is bulky. He's got he's got crazy good stats. Ooh, close too. Close too. And he's got superpowers. So um, yeah, as being Rock type, he is kind of susceptible to a lot of. Uh, a lot of weaknesses, like a lot of real common ones. Water, grass, fighting, ground steel, like that's that's stuff that a lot of people have. Resist normal flying, fire, and poison. I don't think anyone really minds that poison being a, a you know a weak type. A lot of people work around that poison type. Um, definitely can get in the way, but I don't think it, it stops too many types. Remember, it doesn't stop ghost type. I might kill Castle with this because it's normal. Yeah. I dropped his health down. Just not enough attempts at the the Pokeball at the Ultra Ball. Uh, yeah. Uh, 4060. Yeah, it's not as amazing when we compare generational gains, but I think uh, compared to at least the 3060, it's uh, a more preferable thing to have on the market. The only thing people are gonna say is that it's only got 8 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 12. We're back at this conversation again, and to some degree, yeah, I kind of get it. I do get why. I don't think it's a deal breaker, and especially given the performance of the cards, uh, I don't think you'd really be running as many things against the VRAM limit as you do with the, at least the 4060 Ti, which should be doing better. There's, there's, a, there's a problem with that card. Um, I feel like they should have gone with a, a 160-bit bus and 10 gigs of RAM, or even better, somehow fit 12 on. Or even better, uh, can we just high capacity all the chips? Maybe not. Uh, apparently the big problem is that um, they're all uh, using, um, like they're really shrinking the die process on all of those. And the 4090 is supposed to be absolutely gargantuan and they're really reducing it down. To get to the, the the 4060 um and this leads to a bit of an interesting thing where um like when you look at it from a um like a specs and a like a design standpoint i do get why these cards do act in these certain ways to an end customer though they don't see the chip at the end and the the, the actual internal of the chip is like you know, it's the reason why all these specs exist, but it's not exactly the, like, the thing that they're buying based on. I don't buy the, the, the um, the AD107 chip. I don't, like, look for that. I look for the, the card that performs so well in games, and perhaps it's got enough VRAM for my neural network loads, and it's got, um, you know, memory bandwidth in case I'm doing a memory intensive transfer. I want to do some, you know, quick matrix comp calculations, and I'm just, you know, bandwidth uh, struggle, like that kind of stuff, or maybe I, I rely on the, um, the RT cores for something. Um, it's a complex equation, it really depends on what you're, uh, you're looking for. Um, man, he's really stolen, isn't he? Uh, it really does depend on what you're looking for, but the actual design of the, the chip itself is 
an important indicator as to, like, why they've gone this way. And definitely it seems that, like, these chips are designed well in advance. They're not made in response to um, anything too much. They, they could maybe do some things, like, I'm full dead, so we're gonna restart. Um, they can maybe do some things, like, uh, when, um, the 3060, I think, was originally, and the 3050 were originally gonna be four and six gigabyte cards, and I think in response to people complaining about four gigabytes not being enough, they sh uh, they shunted basically double capacity modules onto those cards. I don't think they changed any of the actual design, but they managed to put double capacity car, uh, chips on it. Um, which is, I, I mean, granted, it's nice. It is an extra cost, and I feel like in the case of the 12 gigabyte 3060, um, seems a bit odd, but for the 3050, I think people would have complained real hard about a four gigabyte card um, two years ago. It's just we're in this weird, like, flux bit where suddenly now the eight gigabyte cards are just not enough, even though it's like, oh, we've been doubling the capacity after, like, every, like, four years. And then it's like, <laughs> okay, sure. Someone's gonna say, oh, but we've had eight gigabyte cards for a while. And it's like, yeah, but. It was like one example, I think someone said, of like, we only just now got an upgrade. I think it was like the 30. 70. I think it was the 3070 because the 1070 had um, had a uh, 8 gigabyte versions as well. Like, that, I mean, yeah, we can we can find you know examples where it's like okay, maybe it was like six years, but like it's not. I don't know. At the end of the day, it's like the demands have grown crazy. Consumers are now suddenly running like they were running like crypto stuff, and they had to quickly jump on how to how do we control crypto prices? Because also on top of that, like people were crazy buying all these cards during the crypto boom and we don't necessarily want just investors and high money people to be buying up all the cards and then never talking about that they have the cards. NVIDIA cares that people have and enjoy NVIDIA products like as a business everyone should be you know not just making the money off the cards like NVIDIA if has sort of floundered a little bit because a lot of people bought their cards and then never tell never told anyone they had their cards so it just looks like nvidia was sold out people would say they had paper launches because no one ever said they had a card so and we did it nice first try first try here's reggie rock reggie rock's body is composed entirely of rocks Huh. Recently, a study made the startling discovery that the rocks were all unearthed from different locations. Interesting. How curious. Height is 5... 507. Weight's 507. What a curious guy. So that's two out of three. Let's go and get that, uh, get that third one. I seem to not really use enough uh, balls on that one, so the third one is up here, uh, close towards Fortress City. So I'll first heal, and then uh, I guess we'll just keep going. I don't technically need um, Zigzagoon for or Zigzagoon, um, Wilma for this one, but might as well keep him here for the moment. I'm gonna need him <laughs> afterwards. So yeah, at the end of the day, like. You know, th these designs are ahead of time. I don't want to say, like, I'm apologizing for NVIDIA. I worry I have, like, that gist. Where it's like... You know, like, I, I've sort of ga- I sort of have said that, like, oh, NVIDIA, please hire me, like, that kind of stuff. Um, it's because I like the technologies and the things that they do make. It's- it is close source, it is that, that kind of stuff, I guess, sure, but... Um, you know, inevitably, like, I think they make cool things. And as long as they're not really, you know, infringing on my own ethics too hard. Um, this is, by the way, just a room. This room just exists here. Once you can clear the Kecleon, you can come in here. I needed to come in here because it's got TM11. TM11 is very importantly... Sunny Day. Sunny Day? Do I actually want to teach Sunny Day on... I want to teach on Sedimenta, yeah. What did I want to teach it over? What did I have on Sedimenta that I don't care about? I wrote it down, I just was like... Let's see, what do I don't need? Amnesia, light screen... Um, 
Rock throw, yeah, rock throw is a, not a useful attack for him. I do want Sunny Day. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Because he's not going to learn Sunny Day otherwise, so... It's weird, it's just a cave, it's just here, and it almost looks like it's uh, one of the, um, one of the Reggie Dens, but it's not, it's just, it's just here. Trust me, it's, it's just there. Uh, interestingly, I think in the remake, Heatran is actually in that cave. I don't know if you need to beat the game in order to uncover that, but, oh, probably, because Heatran's not part of the regular Pokédex for third gen, but it's really weird that he's just there. Very curious. Okay, now, some of you re may remember maybe three streams ago, I never fought this one trainer. So we're- we're doing a rematch! We're doing a rematch! This trainer gave me so many troubles at the time. Because... It's a level 31 Milotic. Milotic, Milotic. I have Riff Raff now. Uh, I am literally just gonna, like, Brick Break the heck out of this Milotic. But Milotic is bulky. Milotic is bulky. Also, it's got Water Pulse. Which means... And it's raining. That that makes this fight even worse, but... Now the fact that, like, I'm faster... Should make this at least... Done. I don't have to worry about this Milotic ever again. There you go. I was a little bit concerned. I actually... I forgot that I had to fight this person when I walked up to the, um... To the gym at the beginning of the last stream. And uh, I was like, oh no, I forgot to practice on another Milotic cat. Will I ever beat this one? And then uh, I guess I did. So it was pretty okay. I don't need to fight this Linu. So at the end of the day, I guess like, yeah, NVIDIA hardware is just like this because they planned it like this. And I don't really think that, you know, I do feel like memory bandwidth is super important, and I don't like these newer cards, especially the 4060 and the 4060 Ti, for their lower memory bandwidth. It hinders the cards at 4K. We start getting into like bits where people go like, oh, it's not meant to be a 4K card. But I looked it up. F1 2018 ran just as well, if a little bit better, on a 2060 as F1 22 does on a... 4060 Ti. We're getting to this point where, like, the same kind of game isn't actually performing or looking better on the newer hardware. That's partially because there's just more overhead on the 4060 Ti. If you control for the same game, yeah, sure, like, the 4060 and the 4060 Ti will definitely run better, but, uh, when it comes to, like, the actual demand and the thing that people need, it's like, these cards are not as good. And it's not because of their lower price, it's because they've squandered on a very important thing. Also, the 16... Oh, slap the desk. The 1660 Super is a card. And Nvidia sort of had a card that was too... I never walked up here? I will adopt the movements of Pokemon and create new ninja techniques! I never went up here. Interesting. I think maybe I just wanted to, like, bolt to the town at the end of the last, uh, of the last stream. It would have been ages ago. Thank you, Armaldo. Go for a, uh, return, I guess? I forget if poison... I forget what poison was this. But return is still a great attack. ninja let's swap out to, uh, Sedimenta. Why not? For funsies. Yeah, uh, we'll see what the hardware entails in the future, but uh, for now it's uh, looking like the only release left is the 4060 Ti 16GB, which should be a testament as to how worthless 16GB, not, how do I phrase it, someone's gonna jump on me for saying that, 16GB is too much for a card that doesn't perform really that well. 8 is really riding the line, but it's workable, but I would prefer more. Wow. Okay. You might you be happy I'm searching for ancient rules that are rumored to possibly exist according to magic? Wow. Uh... 
And I guess that's that's uh, there's a big problem I guess at the end of this this discussion where it's like uh, Nvidia's got like um, you know the 4070 is a fair card. It could be a bit cheaper, but it's a fair card right now for 900 bucks. Even though it does have the reduced memory bandwidth, and I would prefer it to be higher, it does all right. There's enough of a gain that it kind of covers what I wanted it to do. But the 4060 and the 4060 Ti don't. And so, the, and there's a massive gap between those two cards and the 4070 in terms of performance. In terms of price, um, sort of. I mean, it's 300 bucks here. So, I don't know. I gotta sort it out. Anyways, I'm done with that. We're all good. We're done with that. No more NVIDIA. I got no more cards for a bit, and we'll probably not hear from them for a while. So. Uh, oh my gosh, no! Not the Poison. Not the PlayStation Network. Also, I guess it's the end of the... It's. I mean, the first half of the year is done, and we're getting to that weird point where like a bunch of uh, half first half of the year announcements are like, oh, where are they now? I don't see them. Anyway, we got Lost Ancient Tomb. Uh, this is the longest bit of text you will see. It says, with new time, hope and love, aim for the sky in the middle. Which is very generic, but it means you have to stand either here or probably here, and you gotta be using fly. It works there, and then uh, the thing opens. Here we have the third and final Reggie fils of the game. That is not their names. It's very coincidental they hired a guy called Reggie fils directly after this. This is Reggie Steele. He steals from me. He doesn't even look anything like the, like, all the sprites look the same in the end. I think the dots were in different places. Were they? No, they're not. All the dots. The dots on the actual Reggie sprites are in different places, but the dots on all the Overworld sprites are all the same, so... Anyway, Registeel has ancient power, like all good Reggies. It will probably... Oh, he hasn't killed me yet. Uh, he's got... Uh, he's in between. He's got 150 defense, 150 special defense, so you've got no real amazing, you know, type now. You just gotta wing it. He's got 80 health. 75 attack, 75 special uh, attack, and 50 speed. So, same speed. Um, that's what I get for having two rock types on my team. This is going to be interesting. This is going to do a fair bit of damage. The burn will help, but the burn is going to give me limited time. Like, he's probably going to die in one turn. <laughs> well... Either I get him right now, or he's probably dead. We'll see how this goes. Uh, his other moves, he's got Ancient Power, he's got Metal Claw, Curse, and Super Power. So I guess they all have Ancient Power and Super Power. And he's got... Oh, and Curse. It really just depends on that fourth attack, doesn't it? Well, does that defense prevent you from dying to burn? No, it doesn't. Cool. Cool game. Maybe I should start with uh, Sedimentar. Maybe he'll be alright to go up first. We'll see, we'll give it a go. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk, uh, the internet is blowing up, sort of. Sort of? It's a bit alarmist if I say that. Um, but uh, we've reached that point where Reddit decided to... Hello, Mr. Crip. Oh, he crits me again. Mr. Crip comes in when I get Mr. Critted. So, uh, the internet is, uh, not exactly blowing up. Also, nice ancient power does all the stuff, and he gets flame-bodied. Cool. Um, the internet's not exactly blowing up, but we're reaching this, like, weird point where a bunch of large websites... I've seen some people categorize this as the floor of Web 2.0, and I don't exactly believe it's a Web 2.0 problem, because there are small sites that are Web 2.0, uh, federated servers, you know, that's Web 2.0, but it's not exactly... Um, wow, I've given myself one opportunity to catch him again. One opportunity. Cool. Um, the, uh... 
Oh, oh. Oh, oh. I had a decent run. I had a decent run with Roger Rock, so. He's probably dead. He is pro I, I don't know why I'm waiting. He's, he's bound to be dead from the burn. Um, uh, but yeah, no, we're getting to this weird point where like a lot of large websites are sort of finding out firsthand that their money models don't exactly work. And I, and this is not actually like, this is a complex story, but uh, this comes in the wake of the Reddit, um, you know, API change and or really all that stuff that they announced basically to kick in on July 1st. Um, so if you use a third-party Reddit app like Reddit is Fun or Apollo or Reddit Sync, you probably realize that yes, Reddit is basically causing all these app developers to pay exorbitant amounts to do what they were doing before. Um, I think they should be paying something, and all the developers sort of agree to this. They're like, hey, yeah, I, I do make money off this app. I don't mind, um, you know, chipping in a bit to Reddit, you know, a bit of usage. Um, but Reddit was like, no, it's like a crazy high rate where it's like, your, your usage right now we're going to charge you $10 million annually for it. It's like, oh, okay. Um, that's all happened. We've, I've discussed that in previous streams. Um, but the the outcome now is that that's kicked in. And Reddit is now sort of a worse site because of it. I have now... I don't know why my, my Tether instance still seems to work. But there are... Um, like, my phone app. I've not browsed Reddit. If you're a, you know, a higher up person at Reddit and you somehow hear me... Uh, note that I I cannot use your site. I get too bombarded with ads and pop-ups and very annoying UI decisions on the, uh, the regular app that I cannot browse the content of your service and provide, you know, useful analytics, money, or whatever. You know, I am now no value to you because your service is now not really functional and usable for me. That may be an exaggeration, some people are going to be like, Oh, I love the Reddit UI, and all of our sample studies show that people love the Reddit UI. I guess, sure, but like, that's the benefit of the third-party apps, is that you don't have to create the app, and like, just someone is like, I like using your site, but I wish I could do it like this, so I made a program that allows me to do it like this. And then other people who like the way that's done can use it like that. There's not really any, like, particular downside, unless they misuse the brand name of Reddit, which they already cracked down on Reddit is Fun by now having to force them to call it Riff is Fun. Like a double acronym going on there. Um, but yeah, you know, that, that's a little bit of a lost customer. Uh, on the flip side, uh, Twitter sort of broke their own API. Um, and that's a problem because I was using Nidder as a privacy-focused front-end, and now that is not working. So, everyone's Nitter feeds, if you're ever using Nitter, Nitter is not working. I guess a lot of Twitter third-party clients are also probably feeling this grunt. Um, and, uh, I think also some people were getting um, server errors when they, were, when they were just using Twitter directly, and then some people also notice it's like, hey, if you open up your web inspector, you'll see that your client is trying to request 10 times a second to Twitter to check that it's back up when it's not. And, it, and they were just like, oh, Twitter just DDoS themselves, which it's, I don't think it's quite as bad as that. I think a lot of sites do that. And then like the moment someone gets a connection, their 10 requests a second stop. Like once someone gets a good response, the Twitter server is not permanently down for everyone. That will eventually balance out. Um, it also requires a person to have that tab open all the time. Um, uh, and I don't think, like, I don't think Twitter is helping themselves by constantly bombarding them with the request to come back, but it will eventually sort out fairly quickly uh, once it once it comes back. I wasn't really looking, and I think Twitter's been generally working for me anyway, so I've not personally had the problems. Check it out, we got the Registeel. I think I got both of those in the same amount of time I got the one Regi... Uh, the Reg Ice. Registeel was imprisoned by people in ancient times. The metal composing its body is thought to be a curious substance that is not of this earth. Do 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 do! Those are your. Those are three of the legendary Pokemon in this game. Um, and the big three that you, I guess, need to catch. Uh, there is. Um, 
Of course, there's the Kyogre, which we got. There's one, there's two more in the post game that I will also get. But uh, that's kind of it for the the special Pokemon that you need to get. Now let's go back to Doofa Town because uh, there's uh, one other place I would like to, um, you know, mosey on into. I also feel like, uh, do I need Grumpig to like gain levels again? Probably. I just look at my team. The uh, Ninjask is level 35, which is on the lower end. So how about let's direct swap them out from Aldo. And then Grumpig here is 36, which is indeed lower than uh, Magcargo, who is 38. I know maybe there's a bit more to like having the same levels in all these Pokemon, but uh, I do feel like being a bit even in levels and perhaps leaning a bit more towards uh, the weaker Pokemon, so Cast Form in particular, um, might be nice. So, but we'll keep Rebox out front. Um, do I keep... Actually, we'll do Nonogram up front, because he can he can handle himself. Um, so yeah, and let's save, and uh, I'm going to swim out east, because uh, there's, um, there's some goodies out east. These goodies you could have gotten a bit ago, but uh, I thought now is actually a good time to do it. I don't think there's really anywhere else that's like too, like I haven't really explored. There's more in the water, there's more trainers in the water. Um, so all the watery areas, and including here, um, you know, like, I'm gonna be fighting trainers just because I rode a boat all the way here. So we're gonna see a few trainers, but... Other than that, I don't think there's... Oh, and the Safari Zone! <laughs> remind me, remind me in, like, after I do this area, I need to go into the Safari Zone. I skipped it before, and it's not because I don't want to show off the Safari Zone, it's that I actually realized, oh, there's an item in the Safari Zone that I would actually like to get. Um, but yeah, so Twitter, uh, they're, yeah, they've killed their API for the time being. It's only temporary, but it's been a few days, and I'm worried that, you know, maybe they're killing a bit too much for the free users. We get into this another point again, it's like, yeah, like, what if I want to do a simple, like, what if I have an idea for a data analytics service or some other kind of cool service and I'm kind of gatekept out of using the API? It costs too much to start off. Like, the problem with an API is that you basically need a free tier. You need, you know, all users to be able to use your API in some way without giving you payment info. Um, or at least a one-time. People don't like being on a, like, pay-as-you-go model for, like, the cheapest things in the world. <laughs> Someone might say, oh, AWS says otherwise. I'm like, yeah, but, like, so many other services don't work. AWS succeeds for very special reasons, and we shouldn't use it as the one example that every single business will be based off of. I don't know why people do that, but okay. I don't mind pay-as-you-go eventually, but, like, I feel like, hey, some people do want to keep within a gentle free tier and maybe go for the extra things that they actually need. Who knows? Um, we challenge you as a sister and brother! Okay, if there's one to talk about this game a little bit, I'm actually surprised how many double battles there are. I thought there were much fewer than there actually are, but it turns out there may be 12 double battles in the game. It's not a large number of double battles, um, but it is something. Uh, oh yeah, heck yeah, I can use Earthquake in this scenario. I didn't really need to use Earthquake, but you know what? It does work. That's the joys of having the flying guy here. There's no, like, real talk. I don't think any of the remaining, like, going to the end of the game actually has any double battles. If it does, I think it's got one, but we're pretty double battled out for the rest of the game. Once you do that seventh gym, you're basically set. And I guess, like, that's a, that's a weird part about the double battles is, uh, I'll, I'll say, oh, I wish the double battles were used more, and then you'll play Pokemon Colosseum on the GameCube, uh, which is a very interesting spin-off adventure they released only a year after this game, um, using a bunch of Pokemon that are third-gen Pokemon, um, and uh, all the battles in that game are double battles, every single one of them. Um, and it's a rather interesting game as well because there's no wild Pokemon encounters. You are sort of bound to all the Pokemon that are presented towards you. 
It's a very interesting game when, uh, you know, if you want to, like, topsy-turvy your, your uh, Pokemon playing, so... Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I'm also seeing reports of uh, YouTube um, giving people warnings that they're using ad blockers and that they won't be able to view videos uh, anymore until they disable their ad blocker. Um, which is... Uh, was, uh, I don't like it. I, I get why. Ad money is money. If you tell YouTube, hey, you know, oh sorry, if you tell the advertisers, hey, did you know that like 90% of visit your website never see your ads? And like, sorry, never see ads full stop, let alone your ads? Um, you know, the advertisers would be like, oh, that means our ads are not worth as much. But I also feel like advertisers are sort of figuring that out anyways. How many people are actually clicking on ads? Or they're falling for things that they don't know are ads. I guess that's the thing. How many people are actively clicking on things they know are ads? Because if they click on things they don't believe are ads, then they're sort of being a bit misled. Um, that's not the worst if you don't, like, do data analytics and tracking off it, but a lot of the ad agencies do. And I feel like that's some very unhealthy data harvesting. It's a bit unethical for people to accidentally believe that it's part of your site when it's not. Um... YouTube's fairly clear about it, but also it's kind of annoying when you click on a video and then suddenly, hey, this is not the thing that you were looking at. This is a ad for a candy bar or a, um, I always get handbag ads. I don't know why. Google thinks that I th I'm interested in handbags. I think someone shares my IP space. So I get completely unuseful ads. I don't know what's going on there. I, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah, again, if I told the advertisers, hey, you know, I play a lot of video games. I make video game content. I search for video game content on the internet, and your ads are losing out to the handbags. Which means I never see any of your ads. I also don't know if I'm actually that interested in your ads. Like, is your advertising that good? Is it beating SEO kind of algorithms? Like, all that stuff. I don't, I don't really know how it works, but to me as an end user, who knows? Who knows what the, you know, like, what I'm actually interested in. I don't really think these ads, um, you know, like, I mean, there, there is advertising that does appeal to me. I really like engaging advertising or very, like, you know, honest advertising. Not like, hey, fellow kids, I'm here selling a product. Like, don't do that. But, like, do, like, hey, you know, like, you know, I have a game. And this game is like, you do this, this, and this in the game. It's pretty cool. You might enjoy it. Um, that kind of stuff is cool. I really enjoy um, advertising that is just a bit more honest and, and down to earth in that regard. Um, even if it is like, yeah, you know, sometimes I'll buy it, sometimes I won't buy it, sometimes I don't care at all. Um, but I, I do prefer and care about the advertising. Um, I guess I commented on the Grimace's birthday thing a few weeks ago. Um, which is a little less than honest, because it's like, hey, we had a, uh, a game tie-in, but you know what? The game tie-in interested me. I really enjoyed playing a game relating to this thing that was happening, um, as opposed to, or, or this, this product that was happening. They wanted me to get interested in Grimace milkshakes. So when Grimace skates around these levels, what do you have to collect? You gotta collect the milkshakes. What do you get at the end? You get milkshakes. Like, you know, they're subliminally pin, you know, pinning down that there's a Grimace milkshake, and, uh, I mean, people have probably seen the memes of, uh, people drinking the Grimace milkshake and then dying. This is an abandoned ship. It's just a ship here. It's abandoned. There's a lot of rooms. There's empty, you know, bits all over the place. It's got this weird, sad music as well. Uh, as well. Ships of this sort are rare, so I'm taking a look around. Hmm, <laughs> there appear to be other cabins. There's holes, but you can't fall down the holes, so don't worry. I don't think you can sleep in any of the beds. Maybe you can. We're in here, we're looking for a very important item. Uh, you will need dive in order to fully explore this place, which is why I did it now. Isn't it funny? I get excited just being here. I don't think it's too complex to explore, but there are three trainers. You want to watch out, there's three trainers. But all the trainers only anticipate that you have Surf, which means they're just as strong as everyone leading up to you. So, don't feel too discouraged. I'm overleveled, it's fine. At Wellner, I tell ya. Um, so anyway, in my, in my rant of, of complaining about advertising, 
I'm more making the point of, I think a lot of web advertising is worth less. I think ad agencies are realizing that the ads aren't making money from, like, costing that much, so they're opting out of paying that much, or going for the more, like, directly targeted kinds of ads, um, where it's like you can guarantee some sales much more than just very indiscriminate web advertising. That is causing a bunch of these sites to go, oh no, something is wrong. Like, YouTube, Reddit, uh, Twitter, like, I mentioned those three because they've taken some real drastic changes in order to crack down on people using their site or sort of circumnavigating how their site, you know, like, using Nitta, Twitter's not getting any ads. I'm just return- I'm just hitting their API at this point. Storage is painted on the door. You're gonna need a storage key, by the way. Look at this guy. Ugh, I'm getting crazy just being aboard the ship. It's not even moving. And he hasn't. He's dry heaving. <laughs> uh, this is the, like, okay, sure? You can just surf here. Uh, does this continue on? Yeah, that actually does continue. I'll come back here in a little bit. I was just noting that that door is there. Uh, we want an escape rope. Cool. Cool. There's probably some other items as well. Uh, there's a dive wall. Cool. Right there. This is a perfect place to go exploring. It's exciting here. I bet there's a there, there are amazing treasures on board. That is how I write acronyms. That's not how. I don't know if that's legit. Yeah, it's a ship. I don't really know the story of this crash ship as well. I don't like. Do they actually say like who the ship belonged to? Maybe they do. Someone's probably gonna yell at me. It's like oh. It's you know, they say here in, in this Koro Koro magazine, and this, like, back of the manual. <laughs> and, oh, there you go. But, moral of the story is, the advertising isn't working out. And that's starting to be a bit of a scare, because a lot of these sites are investor-driven. And I've mentioned that. It's not necessarily that the ads need to, like, you know, that the ads need to actually be the primary source of income. But they need to be showing growth. And I worry that a lot of these sites are internally finding that their advertising isn't working out as much. Um, who knows, maybe some will announce that, maybe some won't. Um, oh, you gotta do a double battle, don't you? Uh, well, we're doing this setup again. So they're both flying type, so... We only found a trainer! Lois! How? They got the, the classic, the Volbeat and the Illumis. And the different genders as well, so that's how you know. Uh, I'm probably just gonna surf them both. They're probably gonna die in one surf. Man, Nonogram, you're doing very good at almost killing things all the time. <laughs> and that Volbeat is very nearly dead, but not quite. Um, yeah, these sites are starting to, like, you know, feel the grunt of the investors going, Hey, if your advertising isn't working out, well, what are you generating? Um, these sites might make the case of going, Oh, okay, well, we're making, um, you know, uh, data profiles for advertisers. But then, uh, well, if the advertising isn't worth as much and the, the, the advertising isn't as accurate, what is the point in knowing more about your customers if inevitably they're not actually getting better ads? Or better anything. Someone might make the case maybe they are getting better ads and I'm just being jaded. Perhaps, perhaps, that might be true. Um, there's nothing really here. There's no wild Pokemon walking around as well, so um, there's gonna be some wild Pokemon uh, on the surface of the water. Like here, you can get tentacles and tentacruels. You can fish here for tentacles and tentacruels. When you use dive, there are no trainers or wild Pokemon. You're just surfing. You're diving. I don't know why I walked around that. Go up the top. And here we are. A magical hidden room. RM1 is painted on the door. 
Our room 2 is painted on the door, and you can now go in this room. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> Very important that you saw that. So we gotta do this whole kind of trek around here. Um, also there's a water zone, which is very, very cool if you need to evolve a water type. There you go. Um, but we gotta do this whole trek because, uh... You know, all these doors are opening and closing in various different ways. Again, again. Oh, did you see that? But it's just trash in that direction. Uh, TM18 here is Rain Dance. Very useful if you need it. I don't think I need it. Or was it here or where I'm standing? There you go. RM4 key. This, this just means room. Uh, so that was RM2 over there. We're gonna need to rotate around to RM. That's RM6. I guess we can go to RM5. But if you look at that and you go, ugh, ugh, filthy room. There's trash cans everywhere. That's right. The trash can itself has the key. As well as also. Uh, more trash, and more trash. Cool. Cool. It didn't even have anything worthwhile. I'm heading to room six. This starts to be the interesting bit where you don't actually get to see where the treasures were. I mean, there was that luxury ball, but like all the treasures are actually in this room. Nothing really stops you from clicking on everything though, other than <laughs> accidentally clicking on that. Oh, I just walk around and pick everything, I guess. Okay. Doesn't seem to be anything uh, important yet. There you go, there's an RM2 key. I don't think... I think the other one is, like, trash. I think there's, like, one more like spot. There it is, yeah, it's more trash. So you just need the, <laughs> the one key. Nothing too hidden. Your item scanner's gonna go nuts. fancy in this room, just a scanner? A scanner? It's another key item. They really- I love- I love how there's like so many like key items all over the place. So I believe with the scanner we now go back out. We go all the way back out east. Okay, cool. Uh, didn't exactly find a key there. Is there another staircase? I just missed a staircase somewhere. Because I'm just thinking like, there's this whole outdoor area. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm an idiot. Oh, that's a scanner! Listen, I can, can I get you to deliver that to Captain Stern? I want to investigate the ship a little more. So, okay. So he basically tells you you gotta go to Captain Stern, and Captain Stern is all the way in Slateport Harbor, I believe. Um, but then, uh, yeah, there's a storage key, and we can use that to open the very, very last door here. Which is down, oh, down. There we go. The door is open. And witness all that work for TM13. That's right, it was just a TM the whole time. But this TM-13 contains uh, a very important item, uh, a very important move, rather. TM-13 is Ice Beam! The only time you get Ice Beam in the game. And uh, we're going to want this on cast form. Um, I know he already knows Hail, but I'm thinking, well, Hail is a lot of work to just switch to Weather Ball, when really you could use that 10 PP on a 95 power, 100 accuracy move that has a... Uh, is it a 30 or is it a 10% chance? I think it's only a 10% chance to freeze. I'm double checking. Yeah, it's 10%. Um, Gen 6, they actually weakened this attack. It is it is a good move, Ice Beam. It's a really darn good move. Um, so definitely worthwhile having... Um, on top of, like, instead of having Hail... It, you do get... I think you get that type benefit from being Ice type and then having Hail active. But I also feel like, well, Weather Ball is sort of doing your work for you, you know. Ice Beam is going to be that fun, you know, counter type. Having an Ice type move that you can just switch on the fly. Um, 
So yeah. Uh, if we keep going out east, we'll probably just find a few more trainers, I guess. So I'm just gonna keep fighting some trainers and heading out east, uh, east to Slateport, so... Um, yeah. So anyway, back to um, Doomsday uh, Internet is Dying discussion. Um, I, the, I don't think the... Oh, I don't think it's... Um, like... Yeah, I, I don't really know if the investors are, like, finding much value in Reddit and in Twitter and all these... I mean, tw it doesn't matter for Twitter anymore, it's been bought. It's done. Um, and that's a lot of money. Twitter is a, definitely a big site. I would definitely say, like, sites are exponential or quadratic in their worth. As in, you know, a site that has a billion users it's more than a thousand times more valuable, I'd say, than a site with a million users. I think there is much more value in having that much captured market, sure. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, what exactly is YouTube trying to make money from? It's a bit of like, well, you know, it's got mind share, it's got market share. Um, in the realm of video streaming, I don't think YouTube is particularly competed against. Twitch has dropped the ball on being um, a site that allows people to upload videos because they don't really offer it to everyone. They don't offer it to me. I wish I could host my videos permanently on Twitch as well, but alas, maybe it's because I'm not like a partner or anything. Um. Oh, wow. Hiya! Look at my chiseled abs. This is what you call cut. Okay, sure. Um. Also, Kick is a competitor. Kick is owned by a casino. Fun fact. Is that a f actually? I've, I've only heard it on, in, by hearsay, so if it's true, okay, cool. There you go. Please look up who owns Kick because I haven't looked it up. Um, yeah. Do I get like down the algorithm because I'm mentioning competitors? Can I just mention like? Does anyone remember VidMe? Like ages ago. Um, not that many years ago. I actually, I secretly was mirroring my videos on VidMe for like a few months when um, the YouTube adpocalypse was happening. And I knew about VidMe um, for a while. And then, uh, yeah, they, they announced that they, uh, eventually they were like, everyone is hosting videos on our site. Uh, we don't have advertised money and we didn't really have investor money. We were actually like a goodness to heart website. And now we just suddenly, we just don't have the money. We can't handle the growth. A lot of these sites, like the alternative sites, are suffering because there are so many users on YouTube and stuff. And you know, like, I don't... There's a lot of R&D in making these sites work on the large scale. I, I can't lie and say that, like, oh, you know, YouTube and, and all these big sites, they hire so many engineers and then it doesn't turn out to be something. Because there's, like... Working under scale is a very interesting problem, and it's something that people don't 100%. Also, Psychic, this is a move that I needed. Uh, instead of Psy Beam, give him the 90 power attack that does way more damage. This is, uh, sorry, that, that may lower a special defense. That's the one. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is what I wrote down, right? Yeah, Shockwave Confused Ray, Calm Mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's only 10 PP, though. That's the only problem, but I don't really think I'd be burning you know, my PP too much in the end. I think we'll be good. We'll be good. Hi, big trainer. Okay. Hello. <laughs> um... Yeah, I... Uh, I do worry that, um... You know, we're getting this weird... This weird sort of divide on the internet. Not a divide, but I don't know, we, we may feel like a bit of a weird crunch where all these big websites that were originally offering us the service for free. Because a lot of people, I mean, there's a lot of cheap entertainment on the internet. There's a lot of people creating things for free, creating stuff kind of out of the goodness of their, their heart. Um, and then, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's like, well, a lot of these sites do rely on a lot of money. And uh, inevitably... If that money don't, doesn't come in, you know, or rather if that growth doesn't come in. It's not that YouTube and Google don't have money, it's that YouTube and Google need to be ever-evolving. And at some point, that's not going to happen. 
and then it crashes, it dies. All the investors pull out, the money dries up immediately, and the company basically just goes woof, straight to bankruptcy mode or scale down mode or the site just can't handle the traffic. And we're done. It's a bit of a shame. You do oh, you know that item you have, that's a scanner! That would sure help us help us on our explorations. Bino, would you trade your scanner for something? Like, say, a deep sea tooth or a deep sea scale that I had? Um, I'm gonna do the tooth. This is your item that you'll uh, that you get to either get a Goribus or a. Um, I believe the tooth was useful, right? I think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 the tooth will double Clampel's special attack. The, uh, the, the uh, scale doubles Clampel's special defense when held. And if you trade um, Clampel while tolling uh, the item, it will evolve into uh, into Huntail and Goribus uh, specifically, or respectively. Um, so that's fun. That's a fun little, like, thing that happens. So yeah, I know I, I said I needed to go to the Safari Zone, but I'm gonna keep walking around a little bit because I'm like, hey, you know what? Conveniently, I'm uh, close to the Trick House. I can't finish the Trick House. You still gotta beat the game in order to do the last room, but... Oh, jeez, I didn't see wherever that was flickering. Is that the window? Is that the cupboard? Yeah, it was, right in the cupboard. How do you know I concealed myself in this cupboard? Come to the trick house. Woo! So what's this guy's puzzle this time? I've completely forgotten what his puzzle is. Um, oh, it's the sixth gym. He's puzzled me to the sixth gym yet again. Um, okay. Uh, so in that case, I mean, at least hey, you know, we get to reuse this puzzle. There we go. I don't think there's any way you can avoid the trainers. I think they're just... That guy is just gonna be in the way. I'm getting dizzy from these rotating doors. I think you get... I think there's three trainers you gotta deal with. Sebastian. Dun -dun 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 -dun. This is not at all the Pokemon you use against Cacton. Because it's a uh, grass dark, isn't it? Um... I think I get Shadow Ball as a... Free be super effective with, don't I know? I don't. What do I get? Psychic is a no go, electric is a no go, normal is fine, um, fire is alright, but. I got that. Ice? Sure. Cacturn is kind of mean, his attack and special attack are kind of high, and also he's just gonna use spikes, which is a absolute deal breaker of a move. But I have Ice Beam. So. Uh, yeah. Inevitably, at the end of the day, yeah, I don't think, um, you know, don't keep your, um, your eggs in one basket, if that makes sense. So if you are a content creator, be absolutely prepared for a platform you're on to just suddenly go away. Um, some people have sort of already prepared for that when it comes to, like, um, being banned or removed from a platform if they are writing the line. Um, if you've been, uh, you know, you play video games and sometimes some people, some, uh, video game rights holders are a bit aggressive when it comes to, you know, flagging videos and striking channels. Cough, cough, Sony Music Entertainment, I was just playing Earthbound. Oh my goodness! I'm never gonna let them down. I'm never gonna let them down. Um, there's a lot of stuff where it's like, you know, with your your platform, I, will it last forever? Who knows? Now a lot of people, they've diversified. You have a Twitter, you have an Instagram, you have a TikTok, you have a YouTube, you have a Twitch, you'll have a um, link tree. Link tree is just where you link out your other sites. But hey, you know that makes it easy. Uh, I don't have a big link tree, I guess, if you're curious about about uh, me, but I do have a, um, a Pleroma instance. Uh, if you've used Mastodon, Pleroma is an identical, uh, like it 
does the same functions basically. Uh, find me at m.bender.com. That is always there. If I get rid of it, I'm going to let people know. But no one can get rid of that for me unless uh, my domain suddenly gets seized from me. Um, I guess, but uh, like legit, I would recommend every content creator get a domain name because no matter what happens to all these services, what, no matter what happens to all of us, your domain name is a quasi like permanent way for people to visit you. I saw, I saw how that was about to work, and I was like, oh, like, so you gotta push that back, so you can come down it again. Look at that, I created all these nifty... There we go. Dang it, trick room, you know? Whoa! Maybe I could get my bird Pokemon to fly over the wall! Yeah, I guess. Benny! How swell. Good thing it's got bird Pokemon and I have pig Pokemon. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you can find me at m.bnl.com. I will uh, effectively tweet from there. Um, if you haven't used a Fediverse instance, I would highly uh, encourage you to. Oh! Endeavor is such a mean move. Um, I would definitely encourage people to, like, you know, discover and, like, understand it, I guess? Um, I'm gonna keep, keep, uh, you know, doing my sales pitch for it, I don't know. But, like, it is definitely a nice, like, you know, at the end of the day, these services will sort of remain. These services can always be, you know, hosted, um, they're federated, so you don't have to necessarily be on mine, um, or anything, you know, all these sites will work in similar ways. And yeah, like, relying on the big monolithic websites, the problem with the big monolithic websites is, and I mean, we're all figuring this out, and me, you know, I'm still sort of figuring it out too. When YouTube dies, where will all my videos live? Where will people find me stream if Twitch is dead, you know, like... I've still got to figure out this kind of stuff. Um, and I think we all sort of do, because it's like, where do we go when Twitch and YouTube stop? Kick, was, Kick is working for now, but Kick is not forever, because Mixer wasn't forever, and... Um, Vidme wasn't forever, and uh... What's another... What's another site? There's a lot of sites like that, where it's just like... Yeah, like... Their success and their lifespan is not really forever, and I mean, a lot of people weren't paying for these services. You know, like, that's fine, that's how the service was set up, but at the end of the day. Uh, also, just to add as well, um, the, you know, the infrastructure and the technology costs to actually run these servers. Um, also, I'm almost as equal. Go. Sticky Bob is a weird one though. Did you say Sticky Bob? I wasn't even looking. <laughs> Oops. Oh well. <laughs> I wasn't looking. Uh, so let's go heal and do the next room, and then I will go to the Safari Zone. It should be good to get all the way to the end. Um, of a victory road, though, in this stream. I don't think it would take, like, too long. The downside is I do have to face my greatest rival known to man. We'll burn that bridge when I get to it. Who do I fight? Who do I, like, crap? These, uh, these, um, trick rooms are always weird because they've got a weird assortment of Pokemon you're up against. I think I'm gonna send Ninjask out first. I think I'll be good. You're being watched. 
Again, I couldn't see him. Is he doing the window? He's doing the window again. He's just trying to be off screen the whole time. Ah, you seem to come in. You're challenging my trick house. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it is a bit doomer for me to just say, oh, by the way, it's also sort of inspired by the seventh gym, except it's even more confusing looking. How does he do it? He didn't disappear like smoke, he flew through the ceiling. He used zoom. He's still in Dragon Quest mode. This Joshua has a Kadabra. Look who planned for the Pokemon with the ghost type attack. How convenient. He's like got the only rock, the soul rock, so. I don't want to be doomer and alarmist about the internet dying. I think we are plenty away before YouTube um, fully dies or Reddit fully dies, but I do believe we're in that weird point where, like, there's a lot of these sites, um, you know, feeling a bit of grunt right now. And I'm not 100% confident all of them will make it out. One of them may, more of them may, none of them may, who knows. Um, oh, I can just get the thing ready. Cool. And then I gotta switch that back and it warps to the beginning. Okay, we're going back down, I guess. Uh, so if I go this away and then up and around this away, I should be able to. No, I don't really get a choice, do I? No, I do. I do get a choice. Yeah. And now I get to go up and around and I can flip that, which then goes up. And then this is just going to take me up and around again. Yep, okay, cool. Man, that's a very interesting, just like, it's caked in their path, you know? And then, now we can go up and around. Or at least I could've, for a moment. Now I should be good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't want to be alarmist, but yeah, it's something I'm thinking about, and it's something that, like, hey, you know, like, a lot of these sites aren't getting better. They are really, really kicking and really feeling like they're getting a bit worse. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Honestly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna predict Twitter's probably not gonna make it, and it's, it's not necessarily because of Old Musky. I think it is because... These open source alternatives sort of do the job. Um, Twitter doesn't have something that, you know, these other sites offer. YouTube, uh, these video streaming ones will probably still survive. And honestly, if YouTube were to scale down, I don't think people would mind by going, Hey, you know, please help fund the YouTube server, just like how Wikipedia does technically rely on a lot of uh, donation money. And it sort of works. The content that, you know, Twitter or that Wikipedia does host, can be, you know, it can make by. I love how this one trainer is like not even like. I think you need to fight this train. Do you need to? This this train is not in any way. No one's in the way of this trainer. And they're all psychic type. How weird. Uh -huh. As a sort of fun thing, I like how in Pokemon Emerald, all the battles are double battles. Just because the gym that this is inspired by is... Which is a different puzzle, but all the... All the... Because the gym is a double battle at the end. I wish that the actual gym, all the battles were double battles as well, but... Oh well. Um... Yeah. That's my Duma talk. I hope you all appreciate it again. Uh, Nonogram is trying to learn agility. Heck yeah, I am not teaching him this move. Or am I? Have I got anything for double team? No, I'm, I'm writing baton pass over that. Source stance, slash, shadow ball, no. I mean, agility is nice of the double team, I guess, but it's also 
he keeps getting faster every turn. He doesn't need a move that makes him super fast, especially because he's probably faster than everyone else already. Kadabra! Everyone likes good old Kadabra. We nearly reached a moment where Kadabra's and Abracadabra and Alakazam, their names were going to be like changed because some guy was suing Nintendo or Pokemon Company for it. And then inevitably, I think they ended up saying, hey, they're not really trademarked at the time of the creation, so they can still use the Pokemon name. Trickmaster is huggable. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, you made it to me. You're sharp. It took me all night setting up those arrows. You're equal in my greatest greatness. Fine, you have earned this reward. And a PP Max. What a great reward. There is one last puzzle, though. He has one last trick room for us. And yeah, I don't believe this trick room is available until after you have beaten the game. I think. The train is in a level 45, so... Hey, if, you know, if there's any time, I feel like now is the time. But if I go back in, I'm not being watched, right? Nah, he's just, he's just prepping, so... It's not ready. It's not ready. It's all good. Let's sail back over to the Safari Zone. All the way over here, because, uh, one, I might as well show you the Safari Zone. And two, because I need to pick up a TM that's somewhere in there. Good all, good all stuff. So, yeah, so the Safari Zone is an interesting area that I kind of briefly glossed over. I don't think I even really uh, explain how it works too much. Um, but effectively, the Safari Zone, I think it's just like um, uh, the first gen Pokemon game, and it's not in the second gen Pokemon game at all, but it's, uh, it's back in this one. Um, you. Uh, I think you also need a certain bike for certain items. A couple of items, but the one that I particularly need... Oh, I actually didn't even need this. Eh, we'll check it out anyways, why not? Uh, so into the Safari Zone. This wonderful little house here, and you go up to this... person's just like... Welcome to Safari Zone. Here you may witness many kinds of Pokemon rarely seen in Hoenn, and you'll see them in their wild, untamed state in natural habitats. What's more, we've thrown open the gates to Pokemon trainers. You're encouraged to steal the Pokemon. Come in and enjoy the Safari Zone. Wow! Amazing! Is it your first time here? Yeah. When you enter the Safari Zone, you start with 30 Safari Balls for catching Pokemon. The Safari Game is over when you run out of Safari Balls, or when you've walked 500 steps. So, the exact same rules as first gen Pokemon, the only difference is you don't actually ever have to come in here. Uh, basically how the map works, I believe, is that there are four quadrants of the map. Um, there's not really a great tell when the map ends. I love the music jam here. Um, you can see that there's a path here that you can only use the acro bike for. Um, and uh, yes, there is, I believe there is a calcium that you can find if you have an acro bike. Uh, I don't have an acro bike, so. Uh, you'll find various Pokemon here, such as uh, Oddish, um, Giraffe Rig, Dojuo, Natu, Wobbuffet, Pikachu, and Gloom. That's in the area that you first start out in. Put a Pokeball on the feeder. Pokemon are attracted to it. I think Pokemon with the same sort of nature are drawn by a certain Pokeball. That's a very interesting uh, thing to mention as well. I have no idea how any of that thing works. Um, I don't think you actually need... It doesn't affect any of your actual rates of finding Pokemon, though. Oh, wait, yeah, as well. Instead of, like, throwing bait towards a Pokemon, you now have to throw Pokeblocks. I remember that was an interesting mechanic, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, so now I'm in the southwest area, and I'm not using the bike. Whoops. What item do I have on my select? It's probably the rod, yeah. Uh, I got the mark bike. There we go. Uh, I'm probably in the northeast area, so in the southwest area, uh, same Pokemon uh, as the southeast. Southwest, southeast, same deal. Um, you can find Psyduck by surfing on which is cool. Northwest, uh, you'll be able to find uh, Rhyhorns and Pincers. 
Uh, there's only a 5% chance of Pinsa, but I do like my Pinsa. And in the northeast, you'll find Fampies and Heracross. And uh, Heracross is one of my, uh, I like, I love them to death kind of Pokemon. Um, very cool. And I'm glad that you can actually get Heracross in this game. Very nice. And uh, yeah, if you walk over here, you'll find uh, TM22, which will give you uh, Solar Beam. Which I thought I could teach on my cargo, but just to, just to prove. Just to prove. I don't have my cargo in my body. I do have a, um, apparently you can teach it to, uh, to, um, uh, Ninjask, but. Oh, I just hit ball. Well, if I just randomly catch a Rhyhorn, cool. Nah, nah. Yeah, I need fighting. Yeah, uh, it's kind of cool, although you do have to really walk a bunch in order to get to the solar beam, like... I'm gonna be done in, like, a few steps, I guess. We'll see. So, it's not as big as the first game, probably because it's all one map now, which is a lot, you know, easier to, to look at. Um, yeah, I don't know, there's not too much to say. But given that you can find Dojo, I do like my Dojo. A little, little pecky bird Dojo. Okay, we're walking out with the Dojo. Heck yeah. Dojo's two heads contain completely identical brains. A scientific study reported that on rare occasions there will be examples of this Pokemon possessing different sets of brains. What a very bizarre thing to write. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about games that I have played. Also, I do want a Giraffe Rig. Just for funsies. I like my Giraffe Rig. He's cool. It appeared to be caught, and now he's watching me. Um, but yeah, let's talk about games that I have played. I finally finished Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. I've basically gone through with all 20-something characters. It was a lot of characters, but uh, no, it was good fun. I really enjoyed how it still brought a new life into the game that I'd played before. Um, the levels were fun and inventive. I really liked the airport stage and um, the, uh, what was the second level? Canada? Canada was good fun. Um, there's still some quirkiness with the maps, but they're like, um, oh, and the tournament stages were all great. I really liked all of them. It's just so many, like, pathways, so many routes all over the place. They're great fun. Um, secret areas and other kinds of special things were great. I liked, um, even though unlocking the characters basically just meant beating the game over and over and over and over again. It was good fun, like, seeing all these special characters and just, like, oh, they're all wacky things that they're doing. I like how most of the special characters, the skill points are also not even named the same thing. It's like, oh, they're not skill points now, they're, um, like, uh, possession points or, uh, like, uh, donut points in the, the case of the police officer character. Um, it's a very funny, very, very fun stuff. The soundtrack is great. Visually, it looks nice. Like, it runs at 60, and it still looks pretty good. I've seen some real, like, blurry and low-resolution PS2 games, but, like, this looks great. Um, definitely a bit, like, you know, early PS2, but not, like, bad-looking at all. It's... That game holds up really well. Really, really well. So... Uh, very good, very fun stuff. Still would recommend. Um, I'm not gonna move on to a new Tony Hawk uh, anytime soon. I'm still gonna try and really finish Zelda. Um, I feel like I'm getting to that point in Zelda, uh, Tears of the Kingdom as well. I've, uh, there's a, let's, let's just say, you start off the game with a na national phenomena quest, uh, which involves going to the four corners of the world. Um, I've basically done a lot more exploring than just that, um, but I've effectively cleared that quest, and, uh, for reference, I am now looking in this. We're gonna head out east. I, I've run into the wall right here. I've run into the wall. It's not the easiest navigating this ocean. I don't 
remember it being as bad in uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire though, so it could just be my own, uh, own judgment. But I mean, maybe as a kid as well, I didn't really understand cartography. So I'm just like wandering around going, oh, where am I going? But like, I don't know, it makes a lot of sense. Let's just go east here. So, uh, but yeah, no, I, I've really enjoyed um, Tears of the Kingdom as well. Uh, I'm still working through a bunch of shrine puzzles as well, so um, I'm definitely curious what's the deal with the remaining shrines. And, uh, like, uh, I'm still tying together a couple of mechanics, but I'm starting to get to that point where it's like nothing as much as a mystery to me. They're all sort of making sense. Um, I just need to kind of finish up, like, what are some quests and collectibles and things that people want. Uh, the Koroks are definitely, uh, well, <laughs> well, I'll try my best to collect them, we'll see. Um, but I do really like how the game, you know, opens up in a very different way. My only real gripe is that the underground, I, like, I'm sort of soft encouraged to explore it a ton, but the reward isn't particularly great. Like, you'll find all these areas that you can, um, you know, go to, and you'll find these roots that you can tap on. But you don't actually get anything for the roots themselves, other than a bit of knowledge and a warp point somewhere in the underground, but then it's like, what do you find in the underground? There are things to find, but it's nowhere near as dense as the overworld, so... Uh, once you can go up a waterfall, you are now free to enter Evergrande City. The final city of the game. And just like, um... Actually, we don't have an example of this in Pokemon. They've done this style of, like, area before. Um, uh, Evergrande City is split into two halves. as a south half and a north half. Uh, the whole, um... Yeah, the whole Victory Road, very awkwardly, has Surf, Strength, Rock Smash, and Waterfall as required HMs. Uh, and sort of awkwardly, that's across uh, multiple different Pokemon for me. Like, I got Strength, Surf, and Waterfall on that one, and then Rock Smash on Yiga Tree. Uh, in theory, I could maybe get Zix... Nah, nah. We'll just go on with four Pokemon, it should be okay. Um, so I, I guess in that case, uh, I've got Armaldo and, uh... Yeah, I've got my... Well, I guess Castform's getting some levels now. Castform needs the levels. Um, but yeah, this rest of the stream I should be working my way through, uh... Through Victory Road, which should be okay. So we're not ending now. Uh, there are... I think I'm counting ten trainers. Plus a boss at the end. So, that'll be fun. Um, Evergrande City here, by the way, uh, if you surf, you could find Palapa, but, uh, I think you can find Corsola if you use a Super Rod. The music's fun, but you'll hear it at the other side as well. So here we are, Victory Road. It is, I mean, it is the final challenge, it is the final area of the game. And in doing so, you're gonna find Golbats, uh, Heriamas, Zubat, Laron, Loudred, Makuida, Wizma, and Aaron. These Pokemon are going to be uh, in the high 30s or even up to level uh, 40 itself. Um, on top of that, all these trainers are going to have Pokemon in the low 40s. Um, so it's definitely going to be maybe a bit of a bit of a challenge. We'll, we'll figure our way through. Um, there's also basement floors. The Pokemon which you are required to go into, the Pokemon are even stronger in the basements. But, uh, yeah, no, I'll keep, uh, keep going through these, so, uh, I'm working my way through, oh, oh, yeah, one game that I, um, yeah, I started playing, and I don't really know how to really describe it, because I started, <sighs> also, all of these trainers are cool trainers, and they're all gonna be, use, be using items, they're all gonna really irritate me by using items all the time. At the very least, this, po this person has one Pokemon, so if they're gonna use items that are really not using them worthwhile. Um, so, uh, it's the one game I started playing literally two hours before the stream, and, uh, I feel like I've got a good gist of what the game is, is, uh, Disney Pixar Buzz Lightyear of Star Command from the PS1. Uh, this game is, nice, 2112. This game is a PS1, oh yeah, here's where you need Flash as well. It's technically not required. The one time I will use Flash in this whole game. You don't even get to see really forever, 
but it helps because you're going to be pushing strength rocks and you're going to goof it up if you push them the wrong way. Um, also, since I'm in the basement one, uh, I think you're going to see Medicham in here and uh, Meditite as well. Um, yeah, hurry on, level 38. So yeah, if you need a grind, here's your place. You're going to find Evolve Pokemon and you're going to find Pokemon in the, you know, the 40s. I don't think it's too complex a dungeon, but it is like... It is a longer challenge, and if you don't have something fast, you know, you're gonna get a little caught out. Uh, let's see. Oh. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm just gonna be in Wild Pokemon Encounter, so, um... Good old Laron, I do like Laron. What level does Laron evolve into Agron? It's uh like 40 It's 42! That's that's really close. If you want an Agron, now's your chance, I guess. Doesn't take too long to evolve them further. I think you can actually find level 42 Larons as well, um, on this floor. Now I don't know if there's multiple pathways to effectively like get to the end. I think. Does not. I think you are required to go a certain way, um, but I'm not 100% sure which way in particular. So I'm just kind of wandering around and we'll find trainers and keep going, I guess. To win your way through the Pokemon League, you need the trust of your Pokemon. I trust that uh, I'm not using Fury Swipes anymore, so no issue here. Claydol, oh my gosh, everybody likes Claydol, except for me. But you know what Claydol hates? Shadow Ball. I love having Shadow Balls in move. That's just some wacky, like, type coverage right there. Oh! I'm getting hit with the cosmic power. Hang on, he's raising his defense. I thought he raised my speed. I was like, what did he raise my speed for? Cosmic Defense is a good move. Ancient Power is a good move. Every time. Every time. Alright, well, uh... What do we... What do we lean on now? Kiproni? Just, just get him with the water. Uh, I'm not sure why he kept trying that. Oh, I guess with the stat increases, because he knew he would get it. He knew he would get it. That's okay. Kipperoni. Kipperoni needs a few levels, to be honest. Um, so yeah, so Buzz Lightyear uh, on the PS1. This is a game that's based on the... Uh, I think it's based on the TV show, but there was also a TV movie of this. They really, like... There was a lot of Buzz Lightyear stuff that came out in the wake of Toy Story 2. So the whole idea of the film having Zerg as a villain and this whole Star Command, like, thing going on. Uh, they effectively wrote it out, um, as a, uh, basically as a, like, an extra kind of theme or a, or a, or a story that exists. And it's kind of like, oh, this is the, the kind of serial in the late 90s that Andy would have been interested in, and that's why he liked, uh, Buzz Lightyear. And, yeah, okay, sure, I mean, I guess there's something sort of, like, self-referentially ironic about it? I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is a game... I knew, I knew they'd hide an Ultra Ball right there. Um, this is a game based on the TV show. The TV show basically has a Freak of the Week structure, so there's lots of villains. And every stage you basically fight a new villain boss. Um, which is sort of neat. Um, I've beaten five levels so far. I think there's 13 in total, so I've got a gist of what the game is gonna be like. Um... Now we're down even further, in the depths of despair. Um... We'll be finding more gold bats. I'm hoping I can run away from these guys still. Nope. We're starting to get to that point. Because then they start using air cutter and these are not fun attacks. Keep getting hit by as you're trying to wander around here. I feel like me not being able to run away is the big tell that I'm not high enough level and then I'm still hitting run away. Oh, there's Sableyes down here, I forgot, yeah, there's Sableyes on this bottom floor. And more wilds, if, or, or more wilds if you're playing, uh, 
Ruby. Just because you've got a lot of gym badges, there's gonna be someone that's better than you. Maybe. Maybe. Jolie. Jolie. Julie doesn't know what a water type attack is. Poor Julie. Yeah. Uh, how the game works, how the Buzz Lightyear game works, it's sort of awkward. It's running on the exact same engine as that Toy Story 2 game, uh, but the controls are a little bit weird. It doesn't have a camera aim mechanic. It just kind of has like a like. You aim where Buzz is facing. You can set it so either Buzz only faces forward and you basically turn left and right like tank controls or you can have him freely move but the camera doesn't seem to do anything. I don't know why. Um, he fires a laser. The laser is permanently like, you know, rapid fire which is cool, sure. Um, but uh, you'll also be finding various other weapons in the Sage. Uh, the various other weapons... Um, you know, like some, uh, like a rocket launcher or a, like a lightning gun or stuff like that. You don't really aim them, you just kind of point them forward and then eventually it'll, um, you know, kill the enemies. Uh, but I've noticed it's not really a great strategy to avoiding enemies. It just, you seem to just constantly be in a state of like attacking enemies and then they just attack you back. Um, and so it's kind of your, you know, your bet to decide which enemies you actually want to fight and which ones you don't. Inevitably, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter about fighting enemies. The only things that you actually care about in order to 100% the stage, you get one medal for um, for beating the stage. And then there's also, this is TM29. TM29 is Psychic. So if you want to teach Psychic to a Pokemon who's not one who already learnt it, well, there you go. Good old hairy mama. Uh, Victory Road is three floors, by the way, so I'm going up and down the same floors, but uh, all the floors have bridges. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you'll see, you'll see how this layout works. Maybe, maybe. Um, so all the levels uh, seem to have uh, five yeah, medals you get. You get one medal for, um, for beating the stage, and then awkwardly you get half a medal for beating the stage with a certain amount of money left. As you defeat enemies, they drop credits, and also sometimes they're just scattered about the levels. And uh, you'll use the credits to um, uh, to buy items. They're just little circle orb things, and you go up to them, and if you have enough money, then it will work. And you've, you've got your, you know, your stuff there. We're gonna use Earthquake, and then we're gonna use Surf, if he still lives. Echelon is a very interesting Pokemon. Yeah, I wasn't expecting him to, like, be too mean, though. It's time to get to this weird point, though, where it's like, eh, you know, we've got a lot of... We've got a lot of... Higher-level Pokemon here going on. It's about to use Rhyhorn, everyone's favorite. Too bad he's quad weak to, to water. That's the thing with water, is that as much as I don't like using water because it's special on Swampert, it's also like, well, you know, there's a lot of Pokemon that are just quite weak. Uh, Tentacruel is weak to ground, by the way. It's also really fast. People forget how fast Tentacruel is. Um, and he's got Barrier, which is not fun, but uh, his special defense is really high. So if you're trying to hit him with Electric or Psychic, uh, you're going to have less of a fun time than if I just use Earthquake here. Except that he, yeah, he had Barrier and it didn't really matter in the end, did it? Um, yeah, it's, uh, so you get one medal for going to the stage and beating the boss at the end. Um, you get half a medal for beating it with some, a certain amount of money left, and nothing in the game tells you how much money you need until you beat the stage and then get told you had enough or not enough. Um, it's kind of, it's really annoying. And then the last one is, across the level, there's little three-eyed aliens. You know, the, the green three-eyed aliens, the ones that go, oh, like that, they have that. So, the level has a bunch of them, if you collect all of them, and it tells you how many there are as you go through the level, so that's alright. Um, then you, uh, successfully get that medal. Um... Good old Laron. Um, 
or at least half of the medal. Uh, then, awkwardly, after you've beaten the level, you have to do the level again. You select a special mode. This is a time trial mode. Beat the time trial mode in, in the time, you get a medal. Beat it in a par time, you get half a medal. Extra. Okay. Uh, then last one, there's a, a guy from the show, what was his name? XF, is that his name? The little robot, and he's uh, all in pieces. You gotta go through the level, pick up his pieces. Do that, you get a medal. Do it fast enough, you get half a medal. There you go, five medals per level, multiplied by 13, that's the whole game. Um, no backtracking required, just make sure that you're good enough and you beat the levels completely and that's your 100% basically. Um, there's also a hard and an easy difficulty level. Uh, I'm playing it on the harder difficulty, so we'll see how I go. Um, but the first thing I'm kind of finding is that it's all playing a bit awkwardly. Um, I found the Toy Story 2 game to be a, like, it does control a little awkwardly, but like, it's a fun little collectathon. Every level has its own puzzles, every level has its own stuff going on like this. One thing I noticed in this game is that every boss fights the same. Like, we're not really getting anywhere when it comes to, like, uniqueness. You shoot the bosses and jump around and, uh, and they're done eventually. The environments are a bit different. I've, I've gone into a uh, volcano level and a street bazaar level and, uh, like, there's some neat little levels going on. But inevitably, at the uh, end of the day, um, I am feeling a bit, you know, of repetition there. And for a game that's only got 13 levels, I think maybe I'm gonna... Um, feel the, um, I'm not gonna do this, I'm gonna go with a confused rank. You could use ground, but I was just afraid I wasn't gonna be fast enough and it'd just kill me in one go. Look at more wall in his creepy mouth. Oh, that's not fun. Oh. Okay, sure. Uh, technically, Psychic... Oh, is Psychic actually going to do more damage in the end? Let me, let me, let me see, because... Psychic has a 90 power, Shockwave is 60. Psychic's got the stab. It's going to do the exact same. It's going to do the exact same damage. Interesting dichotomy I've got going on. It could lower a special defense. Or I could use Calm Mind. Let's use Calm Mind uh, twice. We'll use it twice. And Morwall is very confused. So, yeah, I don't know if um, I'm going to truly enjoy this uh, Buzz Lightyear game, but uh, it's... I, I feel like it's sacrilege because I'm either talking to people who have never played it or people who played it as a kid and are gonna like yell at me for saying, oh, how can you not like it? It's not really, you know, clicking with me in, you know, the way I quite like. Um, it feels a little... Also, yeah, very awkwardly, um, every level is timed. I mentioned that the two extra missions, one's a time trial and one is a collect the guy's pieces in the appropriate time. Um, so very interesting that, like, they're both timed. But the actual level, you're also chasing the boss through the level. If you get to the, the end of the level before, um, before then, then, uh, you know, hooray, you, uh, get to, uh, also you can't use Psychic yet, so I'm going to use Electric. Um, then hooray, you know, you get, I think, uh, the blue chick from the show, I forgot her name, because I haven't <laughs> found her in this game. Um, man, you know, this is not the right type. To go up against any of these guys, is it? Uh, you got this cast form. Get in there. Get in with your ice beam. <laughs> and he's got the faint attack. Oh, I hate the full restore. It's very irritating. Very annoying. Um. Yeah, I, uh, I'm curious how it'll be, but it's probably going to be just like a tick off the achievements and move on kind of game. I was very curious what it was like, because it's by Traveler's Tales. It's running on the same engine, and it sort of, you know, has the semblance that it'll perform and play similarly. But at the end of the day, the levels are crazy linear. They are, like, the first level has a horrendous, like, um, a horrendous, uh design where 
like, you're on a farm planet, I think? You're in, like, grassy fields, everything's a farm. And you've just railroaded. These fences are so close to you that it's just guiding you directly around corners, through this building, up the sink. And, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, it goes on its own track. It's not exactly Crash Bandicoot-like, um, like, uh, you know, linear level design either. It sort of snakes around and you can turn around and there's sometimes forks in the road that you can go through. Um, where does that drop off? I think that's from the floor above. Uh, I feel like I'm probably too slow and I might get taken out by other guys. So I'm going to use one of those, uh, one of those escape ropes. The only one I have. Cool. Maybe I should buy another one. Let's buy another one while we're at it. Uh, so let's use Yiga Tree, and we're gonna fly out to... You can fly back here, so don't worry. So I'm gonna go back here and we're gonna buy an escape rope. Actually, I don't need to buy one, I've probably got one in the box. This is where you use the escape ropes. It's the only other cave I'm really gonna be in. Trainers that I fight. Was that actually five? I think it was. None of them are giving me like crazy trouble, but they're definitely like starting to take out Pokemon, which is not fun. So, I'm storage, withdraw. I'm pretty sure I've got a escape rope somewhere. I've got one. <laughs> Maybe one is all I need. Perfecto. Easy. There's nothing here to cut, that is true, that is true, so... Uh... Yeah, so otherwise, yeah, I'll continue playing Zelda. I, um... I would also like to announce I'm a proud owner of a physical copy of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I've been on a long hunt for finding, uh, that game physically, because I, I do like having my Switch games on a shelf. I don't really like owning them digitally, because then, you know, at the end of the day, I... I don't own anything on the eShop when the eShop goes down, you know? Um, so, whereas at least physically, hey, it's sitting there, it's chilling, you know, um, I can showcase it, I can be like, hey, yeah, you know, I, I owned it like this, and also, I guess physically, sometimes you get better deals, uh, we seem to be having, uh, better luck, um, than, uh, well, like, the eShop goes on, like, some decent discounts here and there, but, I mean, you know, I, I found a the Xenoblade 2 for 50 bucks, and I'm like, yeah, it's not gotten that cheap on, on digital. Yeah. So. All these Max Elixirs are very useful as well, because I know at some point in the Elite Four I'm gonna need it. The Elite Four is also a very interesting prospect, because, like, I always run into the risk of, uh, am I too, um... Like, if I'm too low level for the later guys, do I save before them and keep kind of rinse and repeating? Or do I, like, do I just, like, bail out and, like, or, or not bail out early, but, like, I save, um... Gosh, they all know bite! Do I save, uh, like, right at the beginning and then never save again for the rest of the Elite Four and then I back out? Um, it's usually not like that, like... Not that kind of equation. Usually a lot of people are like pretty good enough to go through it. Rebox, are you just gonna get ripped by Manectric because everything knows bite? Yeah, it probably is. Alright, we'll switch out to Kipperoni, I guess. Man, yeah, Rebox is probably the one who needs a bit of leveling now. Uh yeah, I got him with the earthquake. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know, I still am a big fan of having a physical presence with video games, even if, um, even if the games themselves are very reliant on digital stuff now. I do like the idea of a physical box and something where it's like, hey, you know, you have a shelf of games. That stuff has value to me. Um, I guess you could also just print your own game boxes. Switch boxes are very easy to 
you know, produce, and uh, really all you need to do is just print the, the page on a glossy paper and then inlay it. Um, and it's not like there's a manual or anything else that's really in there. Um, I still like, I do like um, if people can preserve their um, their manuals and stuff. I went to my local Wii Buy and I was like looking at a bunch of games and it's just like, oh, like the cases were all distraught. The manuals were all torn and, and folded over and I get like, you know, some of it's, you know, it's, it's a used game, it's used for a reason, but it's also one where, um, like, I'm about to get killed by a random goal back. cool. Rebox isn't even the right Pokemon to go out. He's just gonna get wrecked by a level 40 Golbat, wow. Or alternatively, the game is telling me, kill the po kill the wild Pokemon you're coming up against. Maybe I should, because I've got another escape rope, because I do plan to bail before I get to the end of this uh, victory road. I'm gonna sneeze, hold on. That was a good sneeze. I, I enjoyed it. It was good fun. Okay, so, uh, I mean, yeah, what do you go up? That's a, that's, how about the switch off castle? Because castle, ooh, the bag's full. Bag's full, that's a, that's a good, uh, good indicator right there. Okay, what's in my bag that I don't need? Uh, let's see, I do not need the deep sea tooth or the glitter mail. Uh, the magnet would be nice, but, oh, no, we'll get that. Tropic Mail, PP Max, Max Repel, Max Elixir, Water Stone, Harbor Mail. The, the box is full. The box is full. The box is full. I'm finding which things. The box is full. Man, there's just not enough room to really hold things, is there? Okay, listen, I, I've got enough stuff in my, or rather enough space in my inventory, I should have the means to sort it out, like I'm holding onto a big pearl. I can sell that off later when I need to. Interesting, I've got no space. Interesting. I keep saving midstream. I used to like always have this principle of like, um, and, the, and this is like a thing, if anyone's ever like recorded stuff for Let's Plays or any pre-recorded thing on YouTube, and it's always like, never save mid-recording, because like, if your computer crashes or something and your recording stops working, um, or your whole hard drive dies or anything like that, um, it's always like, uh, you know, make sure you didn't save mid-game, because otherwise then you can't return to that original state. Um, if you're using a, uh, like an emulator, I would always recommend like, backing up your saves before you start a session. Um, but, yeah, when, when you're doing streaming, it's like, well, I guess you've technically recorded all that content. I'd also recommend, if you ever record things, record using MKV as a uh, container format, just because um, it contains the same video contents as, um, like, you can, you can store the same video streams as MP4, and you can just, like, when it's all done, um, what's the term? Just re-encode, like copy the container format, you just copy it over, um, you don't actually have, no, not re-encode, you're, you're literally, like, just sending the, you know, rewriting it as an mp4 file, basically, um, rather than have to go, okay, well, this is what this video is like at 6,000 kilobits per second, like that kind of stuff, um, but MKV apparently supports restarting, so like, or like partial incompleteness, so if uh, MKV, or if your recording somehow dies, your program stops in the middle, the video can be played up to a certain point. Uh, I'm curious what's behind this rock. I didn't go this way. There's a lot of weird, funky alternate routes. I'm probably gonna find trainers, you know? All over the place. Yeah, since, uh, since in, I need to dedicate, like, two Pokemon to be my HMs, this is a bit awkward. 
if uh, that I basically only need four Pokemon, or I, I can only rely on four Pokemon to uh, get to the end of this. Because you're going to have to fight a guy who's got five Pokemon. You're going to need something that can take him out. Uh, this is an interesting prospect for me with Dodrio, because I'm Bug-type, and that's going to absolutely ruin my day. So we're going to switch out the cast form. We're just going to try and land a Thunder. And he's got the good old try attack The ever irritating try attack And he's going to be fast, he's going to drop it off again. Eh, yeah, I landed the Thunder. It's all good. It's all good. All put in the hood. Easy stuff, easy money. Nice, three boxes gaining levels in the back. Uh, what have we got? Uh, Laron, let's switch over to Kipperoni, because it can use water, or even better, Earthquake. Earthquake's better against Laron, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, the good old Earthquake. He's not rock ground, he's uh, steel ground. But the same problem, the same uh, weakness arises. Uh, Kadabra, you know what that means. Switch back to Nonogram. Dude, Kadabra's got horrendous physical defense. It's like, as much as, you know, some people say, oh, it's okay to, like, use a Pokemon that needs a trade evolution uh, while you're playing single player, because you can't do the trade. Um, but it's like, oh, you know, sometimes they're okay. Kadabra is not one of those. Kadabra is just like, I mean, he's fast. He's got the special attack, and then he's got absolutely no health and defense. You hit him with any physical attack, my, it did not need... He, I didn't even need it to be super effective. It ain't doing that well. He ain't, he ain't living out of that one. So, on the subject of alternate paths, I believe there's a waterfall here, which uh, takes you just around. Uh, and there's a guy here, chillin'. That's why there's 10 trainers as well. They're not all in the way, but they're definitely... Uh, at least managing the forks. And managing the items in the forks. First he's got a Swallow. Uh, let's switch over to... I guess we've got a Rebox. We'll see how this goes, but... Yeah, no, I, it's going to be sad when, like, there's so many games. I do want games to have physical, uh, I guess, box paraphernalia. I do really enjoy that. Um, like, I wouldn't mind if, like, hey, game companies are like, hey, yeah, we can ship you a physical copy of the game. Like, that kind of fun stuff. Um, oh, he's got a Manectric. And the Manectric's probably got a Crunch. And he's relying on me using Shockwave all the time. Okay, well, uh, two can play that game. <laughs> We're going to Kipperoni. Yeah, sure, he's going to use Bite, but it's not going to be too bad. Okay, it's going to be too bad. Don't you dare do this to me. I've seen it happen where you keep getting, like, flinched. You're constantly in your flinch spam. You'll never get anywhere. Down he goes. Down for the count. Okay, he's back to the Sweller. He's back to the Sweller. We're going back to the Rebox. He used Double Team and then he switched down. So, uh, no more Double Team. He's, uh, back in here. Oh, he's got Endeavor. I hate Endeavor. It puts your health on the same percentage of health as, uh, left as they have. So a fast Pokemon is just going to use, like, a Focus Sash, stay on one health, and then use Endeavor, basically. And then they're going to use, like, Quick Attack or a Priority Move to attack first and just, like, deal that little bit of extra damage. It's very irritating. It's an annoying strat and everyone would always use it. Uh, I have no Priority Moves in my, um, in my repertoire as well, so I would get caught out by that. There's Kadabra with the same, you know, problem as before. You know, she's a Kadabra. And, uh... 
Shift tree. Hey, you know what? All four of my Pokemon get to show a little bit of love here. I wish I had a bug type attack, but that's okay. Good old shift tree. Let's get him with the old ice beam. I still think shift tree could be very, like, terrifying. He can definitely have some real, like, scary moves, but right now he's got Harden. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. And, uh, yeah, there it goes. So I think out of all the trainers, I think there might only be, like, one left that I haven't fought. I know Matt Cargo is probably copping out of there because he's only level 38, but I can come back and... Uh, are we going to do a grinding stream? Maybe. Maybe I might be doing a grinding stream. Because I, I, I don't know, man. I'm looking around going, apart from me avoiding all the wild Pokemon, what exactly have I not fought yet? Like, in this cave, there's definitely other trainers and stuff that I can have a go at, but... Dude, imagine, like, going here and then, like, oh, whoops, whoops, wrong solution. just gotta, like, wing it. This is a pretty gnarly, like, you know, Mystery Road Cave. Mystery? Victory Road Cave. Um, here we are, the top. Uh... Am I ready for this? I don't think I am actually ready for this. I'm pretty sure it's, like, right here. You get thrown into your, uh, your battle. No, not right here. I thought it was right here. Do we just heal up and, like, have a go? No, I got too many people who are injured. Yeah, okay. Second escape rope. We're doing it. We're healing before the last guy. Okay, so here's a question. Who on my team do I need? Technically, I don't think you actually need waterfall in order to make it through this cave, I think. And uh, since you don't actually need, well the problem is you need strength, I taught you on strength as well, so. I don't think I'm really getting out of this one with, uh, with that. So, okay, so who am I going to have? Who's the four on my team who I'm going to have to get through this cave with? I definitely want to keep cast form. I feel like I would like um, I feel like Swampert is actually going to get caught out. Yeah, I have a feeling maybe I'm not going to rely on Swampert on this one. I feel like I would prefer Amaldo compared to Swampert right now. So, okay. And then does Macargo have a time to shine? He's definitely got uh, at least two Pokemon he could be okay against. Um... Would Grumpig be okay? Uh, yeah, the problem is I can't start with Nonogram, but I'm gonna go in with... Yeah, let's, let's get my cargo in. I'm... I'm a little bit on the fence about what I'm doing here, but... Uh... I have a hunch. I have a hunch. I have a hunch. So, uh, for, yeah, for reference, there is a, uh, a uh, trainer battle. Our big trainer battle, which is, uh, is going to be the, the, the landmark battle of the, the stream. I gotta end with a very important battle, you know, as you always do. Okay, so let's get through Victory Road one last time, once more with Gusto. Give him the cleanse tag. Because he's not really doing anything other than like copping all these wild Pokemon encounters. 
but yeah, I, I do wish there were more physical runs of games. I know there's companies like Limited Run, um, although some people have uh, some some beef with Limited Run. Like, they're not a big fan of uh, like re-releasing games physically to effectively renew copyrights and licenses, or um, they're sometimes like licensed scalpers. Like, uh, some guy bought the license to sell Glover on Steam, and it's like, he's just use the license to just re-release an, an emulated version or a, like... Is it actually an emulated version? I thought it runs native. Is it just running an emulator and then upscaling it? Is that what it's doing? That's very disappointing if it is. Um... Am I even the right level for this or do I, like, need to, like, fight some wild Pokemon? Because you don't need any, any, uh... Any HMs in order to get to the floors that start having like hairy armors and things like that. I mean, they're level 40, they're gonna, you know, deal a bit of damage and also give a bit of experience, you know. But now, I, I have a hunch I'll probably be fine on this fight, and it's because, um, these, well, one, I have a very diverse set of moves all of a sudden. Um, and I have a feeling that, uh, yeah, none of these Pokemon are particularly structured. This is, this is going to be an interesting fight if, uh, if what I'm feeling works out because, um, my whole goal with my team is to kind of have a bit of a dynamic structure. My only problem is, uh, I don't have, uh... Yeah, a move on Ninjask. Uh, he only learns at level 45, which is uh, too late for right now, but definitely something that... Listen, when I do a grind stream next week, I'll do that grind stream. Um, I do want him to be level 45 so he gets that move. Um, gets Baton Pass, because that is going to be a nice setup move. There we go. Down. Breakable. How many times have you seen this puzzle now? Alright, I forget exactly where... <laughs> where exactly this guy comes in. I hope there's not just a trainer right in front. That'd be kind of annoying if there is a trainer right in front. There is a trainer right in front. I left. I didn't even see that there's a trainer here. Okay, in that case, uh, pull out Riff Raff, because I know exactly what he's about to send out. I've made it this far a couple of times, but the last stretch was so long. There was nothing in front of this guy, by the way. The battle I have to do is a personal one. Oh. Oh, this guy's got a cacton. Uh, me going in with a fighting type attack, I guess. This wasn't quite the guy I was expecting, but you know what? I think this will work. Oh, so close. As long as he doesn't wreck me back with a grass type attack, but I should be okay. Or he could just waste my time. That works too. Whoa. Every time I wanted to just get a little bit closer, but... No, uh, no. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on, um, on, a uh, wow, this, pfft. I don't use your strategy. Spikes is not going to do anything to me. Okay, we are switching to cast form. Cast form is going to be my opener. And then I'm going to save here. And then this is going to be a bit of an interesting go, I guess. So let's go up here and <laughs> counter a wild Pokemon, which means you know I get to save again because I there's a lot less distance to the end here. Oh, cast form, no. No, cast form. No.
Did I bring a healing item? I don't really want to burn a max potion, so, uh... Listen, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm stingy. I'm stingy. This is how you, this is how you get to the end of the game without necessarily fighting any... Oh, even better, I'll just... Switch a ninja desk. If I walk up a bit more... Then switch back. <laughs> this is a very stingy thing, I know. Listen, next next week's the grinding stream. It's okay, it's okay. And here we are. Did you expect this guy? Hi, Beardell. I think you're supposed to see me. I made it all the way here. It's all thanks to you. Being I'm losing to you, the time may be stronger. But I'm not going to lose anymore. I'm going to win for the Pokemon who gave me cards and strength. Okay, here I come. So, Wally, which for reference, disappeared after the third gym when you kicked his butt because he only had, you know, he only had rolls. He's come in here and he's got a full team. Finally, Wally means something. Unfortunately, his team's a bit all over the place. I don't really think he's got an exact strategy. I think he's just kind of picked all the Pokemon that, like, other gym leaders have had, basically. So, um, so Wally here, he starts off with Altaria. It's got Safeguard, Dragon Dance, Aerial Ace, and Dragon Breath. Nothing you've never seen. Aerial Ace is definitely going to be a bit of a, you know, hitter, but, uh, Ice Beam. He's got no plan, basically. Uh, it, oh, his plan is to use super potions? Excuse me, Wally. I don't even think that's enough to save you. But okay, sure. So, um, it's definitely, yeah, it's not a terrifying fight. Oh, of course. I don't think it's a very terrifying fight. I think, you know, like, it's Wally. But I am also rocking a team of, uh, we're around level 40 now, I guess, but there's only really four of them that are able to contribute towards this. Uh, next up is Del Caddy. Del Caddy is... My team is... Oh, no. Hmm. Hmm. Now we'll go on with Riffraff, sure. Del Caddy is female, as always, so... Uh, and, of course, it no oh, actually doesn't know Attract. No! It knows Sing, Faint Attack, Charm, and Assist. Is Del Caddy ever male? I don't think Del Caddy actually has a male version. Oh, it's 25% male, 75% female. Okay, interesting. Um, ooh, ooh, that was a that was a gutsy thing I was predicting there, but this should. Oh, oh, well, who cares about getting attracted? We got this. 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 Dang it! He's given up. He's given up with the sing. Dang it, come on, come on. Oh my goodness, please riffraff. Please. No. I was tempted to use Meg Cargo, but then I was like, I think Meg Cargo is going to get a bit too much, like, go somewhere else. The worst part is that, like, this is purely luck based that's, like, catching me out right here. Like, I know Sing, also good old sis. You know, the one, the one attack I didn't really need right here. Oh, I guess that's not that strong, sure. I'm in love. Finally, finally. Gosh, I can't believe, I, I can't believe that, okay. Um, yeah, nothing's really, I mean, that Delcaddy was wailing on me, but, uh, not really anything better. Uh, we got Magneton here, I've got two options for Magneton, we'll just go in for my cargo here. Oh, sorry, for, um, for Riff Raff still continuing on. Uh, we'll just use Brick Break, oh, he's got Thunderbolt. So he's got Thunderbolt, that's a scary electric attack. Um, yeah, okay, I was expecting that. So we might be need a bit of a special wall right now. Let's kick him with the old sediment. Uh, I might be slower than him, but you know what? I've got Flamethrower. Uh, he's got Thunderbolt, Tri-Attack, Screech, and Supersonic. I was, ex 
expecting to resist a lot more special defense than that. This might be interesting. Yeah, this might be actually a bit interesting here. A magneton is what inevitably will be my downfall. Okay. Uh, let's send out the Nonogram. And, uh... Give him the old, you know, oh, my Pokemon is faster than your Pokemon kind of gag. Everyone likes that gag. Um, so we'll use the Shadow Ball and uh, call it a day there. Oh, it's weak to him? Nice. Uh, it's now got Roselia. Roselia here, I wish I had... Uh, Yeah, we'll continue with Cast Form, sure. I wish I had, um, my cargo here, because Roselia would have nothing to go up against, but sure. Uh, Roselia here, uh, knows, uh, what's Roselia know? Leech Seed, Toxic, Magical Leaf, and Giga Drain. Two really strong, uh, um, grass-type attacks, so not the most fun if you have someone weak to grass. Um, but I can still rock Ice Beam, apparently. Yeah, Magical Leaf is going to be a bit gnarly, but not too bad. Yeah. While he was hiding another Super Potion. Unfortunately, that really isn't going to save Brazilia here. <laughs> not at all. Get old Wally hiding your, your, your Super Potions until the end. go, and now the big one. The Ralts has evolved into a Gardevoir. Gardevoir is definitely one of the meaner Pokemon out there, but Gardevoir does not have much physical defense. And I've got Shadow Ball, and I'm worried that I might get swept in one attack, so I'm gonna just kind of use Shadow Ball twice, as opposed to using Sword Stance. This only got 65 defense. The base stats are 68, I know, uh, 65 attack, six, yeah, 68 health, 65 attack, 65 defense. 125 special attack. Um, yeah, this might be a bit awkward. Uh, yeah, this is a bit awkward right here. Because um, I think actually... By the ball, there's 115 special defense and it's going to be faster than me. Uh, the moves this uh, Gardevoir has is Psychic, Double Team, Future Sight, and Calm Mind. Future Sight is definitely uh, not a fun attack. Psychic is not a fun attack. Okay, do I need to spam a revive or are we going to have to take two on this one? Because I got right at the end of the fight and I got super unlucky that um, uh, someone... Yeah, I do have revives. Okay. Um, like literally, literally Nonogram's got this. Yes, I, there is a future site. Yeah, there's a future site happening, bro. You got this, Jonah. Uh, get him with the strength. You got this, Jonah. There's something wrong with his AI. There is something wrong with his AI. Okay, no. <laughs> But yeah, Gardevoir is a heavy hitter with Psychic, and he's not the slowest boy in the world. Um, but yeah, inevitably, oh really? 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 I had to use two revives on that one. I know I should have. I should have planned for that one. And I should have just attacked now instead of actually using a, a um, you know, a thing. Did I goof myself again? Did I actually just goof myself again because he like used Future Sight and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna use Revive. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. We're gonna have the first tie of the boss fight. Well, okay. Uh, nearly didn't make it, but I had two revives in my party, in my inventory, so... Okay, sure. 
I couldn't beat you today, Bino, but one of these days I'll catch up to you. He just lets you go. Also, what a jerk. Let us heal. We both went through this arduous, like, trek all the way up here to the big, the big league, the Pokemon League. That's right, it's got a large Pokemon Center and two guys at the front just double checking that you did indeed grab every, you know, every, uh, gym badge on the way. Um, so you can heal. Uh, there is a shop on the other side. So if you want to buy the most essential items, uh, which uh, usually I spam like full restores and revives. People probably know my strats of just like, why yes. How can you tell I've prepared for the league? Uh, I guess this is the number I can buy right now. Yes, I do buy all the stuff, because what else do you buy your items on? I don't need to buy TMs right now, so. Um, so yeah, I, we are now officially at the very, very end of the game. Uh, also, just for reference, after I beat the league, I do have about an hour or two hours of extra content. So um, it's not going to be the end of the world just because I've been in the league. Uh, but it is probably going to be a little bit of a grinding stream, and then we'll take a stab at the league uh, at the end of the, the next stream. Uh, for now, let's sort this inventory. Inventory? <laughs> this is my inventory right here. I hope you appreciate my inventory. Uh, but yeah, here's my Pokemon right now. We currently have uh, Cast Form at level 43, Ninjask at 39, Magcargo at 38, Armada at 41, Swampert at 38, Grumpig at 39. We are hovering around 40. We've got three Pokemon under 40, two Pokemon a bit above 40. Uh, for reference, the champion has a level 58 Metagross. I would be screwed if I went in like this, so uh, we'll do a bit of grinding, and uh, we should be better. We should be better. That's high level Pokemon in this game compared to the last one. But until then, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this stream or you missed parts of it, uh, it'll be on YouTube. You can follow here on Twitch where you'll get the notification I'm out. I'm doing a stream. You can subscribe on YouTube. Um, you'll, you know, you get told when the VODs are up and that's about it. Um, unless I do any special extra bonus -y content, we'll see. We'll see what I do. Uh, you can follow me on Pluroma, I mentioned earlier, m.bn.com. Uh, it's not the Pluroma thing you follow, it's bno at m.bn.com. But uh, you go to that website, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll see what's going on. Um, so, yeah, no, that's that's good stuff. And, uh, yeah, if, um, yeah, if you enjoyed any of this, uh, or you have any extra things you want me to, like, do before I beat the game, or things of, like telling me that my team is really bad which it sort of is some degree <laughs> like i'm still a bit slower than than a uh, wally i feel insulted dang it wally dang it all right stay safe eat your greens don't stay up too late and uh wally is kicking my butt happy fourth of july fellas by the way <laughs> have a good one